this lecture I'm going to give you the typical first day, first lecture sort of idea that you'll get in most statistics classes. And just for your information, I'm using a statistics book uh, on business statistics that I usually follow by Anderson, Sweeney, and Williams called uh, Modern Business Statistics. But this is fairly typical of things you'll talk about in most statistics classes. And this is going to be boring, just to warn you ahead of time, because we're mostly just going through some definitions. But I'll try to give you some examples of definitions. But let's do this pretty quickly. Uh, if you're taking a statistics class, typical definition of statistics here would be the art and science of collecting, analyzing, presenting, and interpreting data. Not much to argue with there. However, you have to also know what the word statistic means. Now most people in everyday language when they hear the word statistic they're thinking about some sort of facts and figures or something like that. But it's really not what the word statistic means. A statistic is some sort of knowledge, some sort of summary measure such as percentage of people with a college degree or the average income but what makes it a statistic, technically speaking, is that this number is calculated from a sample. And so whenever you see the word statistic, think of this as meaning that what you're talking about is an estimate calculated from a subset or a sample of a population. If you are talking about a quote unquote statistic that's calculated using all the data on all of the things you're interested in, whether it's the entire population of a country, or all the students in a university, or all of the cars that were made in a particular year, then that summary measure, that calculation, is called a parameter. And in the field of statistics, we carefully distinguish between these two things because a statistic is an estimate and the, a parameter is the real deal. It's the correct answer. And so a lot of the discussion in a statistics class is involved with trying to discuss how close an estimate a statistic is to the parameter. So other things you expect to talk about in a statistics class are things like data, this is the words you want to use for the facts and figures, the information collected on something, not statistics. So we're talking about data. And a data set is just a collection of data for a particular study. There are two main types of data you could collect, either data for a cross-section, which gives us an idea at one point in time what's going on, or you could look at data over time, which we call time series data. So let's talk about a couple of examples of each of these kinds of data sets. Let me drag in here. This is a cross-sectional data set. This is a data set on cars from the year 1993. It's getting kind of old now. It's actually a sample of 93 different makes and models of cars from the year 1993. And for each car we have make, model, type of car, small, mid-size, compact. The cheapest price you could get it for in thousands of dollars if it was a very base model of the car. Horsepower, the average price people usually paid for the car, and the maximum price people would pay with all the options in thousands. Highway miles per gallon, engine size in liters, fuel tank capacity, etc. So a lot of different variables on these cars here. Now, this is a cross-sectional data set because it tries to capture characteristics of cars in one year. Now, a time series data set or a time series look would be, for example, here in this graph, this is a, a time series graph. And what this graph is is for every day in 1978. So starting with January 1st, 1978, and going through every day during the year, we can see how many babies were born 
on every day during the year. So we're looking at one variable and how is it changing over time. Now this would be equally valid if we looked at how many babies were born each year for a 50 year period. But here I'm looking at just one day at a time in 1978. What can we see interesting in this time series graph? Well, you notice that there are a few points together and then a drop off and then a few higher points and then a drop off, a few higher points and a drop off. And what we're seeing here is each day of the week how many babies are born. And you may be surprised to find out that more babies are born on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, fewer on Saturday, and even fewer on Sunday, and then a big jump on Monday again. So yes, doctors do have some input, and mothers do have some input into what day of the week your baby is born on. A lot less on Saturday and Sunday. This could be that uh, fewer doctors want to work on Saturdays and Sundays, or fewer mothers elect to have a baby through induction on a Saturday or Sunday. So interesting trend. You can also see uh, different trends with different months of the year. Typically more babies are born in July, August, and September than in other parts of the year. So this is an example of time series data. So some other definitions, some vocabulary words you need to be familiar with are elements. Elements are the things we're collecting data about. So for example, in this data set on cars, the elements are the cars themselves. So we take a particular make and model of car and we want to know some information about that car. And so a variable that is a characteristic of interest for the element. For example, some of the variables in this data set are the minimum price, horsepower, average price, highway miles per gallon, engine size, length, and weight. So these would all be variables associated with each element, each make or model of car. An observation is a combination of one element, one maker model of car, and all of the information about it. So if you're thinking about data in a spreadsheet, and an observation is a row. Typically a variable is a column, and an observation is a row. So we went out and we observed the Acura Integra, and we recorded all the information about it. So this entire row is an observation about the Acura Integra. A population, that's all the elements we'd be interested in. So the population would be all the different makes and models of cars that were made in 1993. A census would be a kind of study where we collected data on all, every single different make and model of car in that year. A sample is if we just choose to record data on some of the particular makes and models, but we don't get all of the makes and models. Now once we have all this data, a few different parts of statistics that we will use in this course are first, what we're going to start off with in this course, are looking at descriptive statistics. That's where we take a big data set and we summarize it. We just want to break it down into ways that make it more easily understandable. Now one way we could do this is to calculate the average price for example and so what I've done here is calculate that the average price of these cars is nineteen thousand five hundred nine dollars and sixty eight cents since this is in thousands. Uh, we could also summarize or describe the data by calculating a correlation which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Now also what we could do is um, summarize or describe the data by making a graph. So right here what I've done is take the miles per gallon of these cars and I have made a histogram. The type of graph that shows us that uh, it looks like a common miles per gallon range would be 25 to 34. Um, if you're higher than that you're getting really good gas mileage. If you're less than the 25 to 34 kind of range, you're getting pretty bad gas mileage, it looks like here. So just different ways to describe and summarize the data that are going on.